Hello everybody, welcome back to Darkest Dungeon. My name is Bear. We had an unfortunate expedition last time. We are really stressed out with our new party here. Torn about, torn about! Her entire state of consciousness has been torn about, more like, in the uh, fact that she's now paranoid. Watsu is selfish and Chartres is abusive. So I think the first thing I ought to do today is check out the stagecoach to see which new, rec new heroes are available for recruitment. And we've got a- ooh, we've got ourselves a new class, the Grave Robber! Please move your text, thank you, the Grave Robber Noyers! Interesting, this looks like it could be fun. Hatred of Mankind! Monster-type human, she gets a boost to damage, lowers the stress resistance as well, but will only gamble to relieve stress, which I'm totally okay with. Let's check out her skill set real fast. She's got a lunge with an accuracy-based damage modifier and a crit mod chance as well. That looks pretty solid. Flashing daggers as a group attack in the middle of the pack. Shadow fade, which is, a, I believe, a self-buff. Actually, no, it looks like it is a targeted attack with... Wow, that is... Holy cow, that looks pretty amazing if I'm reading that correctly. That's a damage modifier, plus a stun chance, and it gives her a bonus to dodge. Am I reading this incorrectly, or is this attack extremely good? That moves her- oh, okay, that moves her back one step in the ranking. Oh, oh that might be the trade-off then. So obviously you don't want to do that over and over because that would just move you back and would for force you to waste effort in changing the formation, but still, that's amazing. And then Thrown Dagger is her ranged attack, so she can move into the back of the line. In fact, she doesn't really prefer being in the front. She may do well being in the second position, then starting off with a couple of Shadow Fades, moving back into the back areas, and trying to attack in ranged manners from there. The Oh, okay, I see. So, a lot of her kit has to do with moving around in the order of the formation. So the lunge moves her forward two sp spaces, and the shadow fade moves her back. Now, is this damage modifier, is that... I wonder if that affects her, or if it affects her... Yeah, it looks like that does affect her. Okay. I was misreading it then. Because it always tells you what, when the target is affected, it says it, uh, you know, based on target. So this stuff must be affecting her negatively. So that looks like, oh, so that's kind of a retreat. And then it gives her a dodge boost as well. So that, I guess, is when she's on the front line and we want to kind of send her back a, a little ways. And it makes her extremely ineffective for the remainder of the fight. All right. I see, I see. Still, she looks awesome. I'm definitely going to pick her up. So let's get Noyers in the party. And then another Hellion, I guess, wouldn't be too bad, considering we lost ours on our last excursion. So let's have a look at our ones that we have available here. The Wicked Hack, Barbaric Yop. Breakthrough and Adrenaline Rush. This looks like basically the same kit that we had before. She is enlightened. She will only meditate for stress relief. And uh, she's a phobe of the Warrens, but she has 15% move resist as well as some bonuses against the Unholy. Which could definitely bode well for us considering we're more than likely going to go back into the ruins pretty soon here. Although we will probably take for Roy, at least, for the front line going in for the future. Chargers, of course, needs to commit to some stress relief. Let's check out Verdun as well. Again, a pretty similar kit here. Uh, actually, oh, that's the one I was just looking at. I'm dumb, sorry. Uh, or no! Oh, yeah, they're very similar, actually. Well, that's interesting. Alright, well, let's see which one has the, uh, least worrisome negative quirks, and I suppose that will probably be Malvolet. So let's take her and go with that. Barbaric rage and unrelenting savagery make for a powerful ally. Now to address the issues of uh, the stress relief we need, he will not pray or flagellate, which means we need to send him more than likely into the tavern. Let's go with the, uh, tell you what, let's go in the bar, and try out the bar for charges. I'm going to try to upgrade this as well, increase st stress recovery Strong and reduce this treatment cost. And companionship. Seems like a good life. option. God, his pauses, I just <laughs> have no idea when he's going to speak sometimes. <laughs> We'll confirm the treatment there. Now for Watteo, what else can we do here? Uh, he's obsessed with food. Probably doesn't have much to do with anything we could try to treat him with in these areas, but we could uh, send him over to... Actually, you know, with him being an occultist, I imagine praying to a higher power. Well, I don't know, depending on what you define as a higher power for this guy. Hmm. Doesn't look like there's much else that we should really be worried about. Selfishness may be... Uh, may be well treated in the penance hall. We might want to try that out. Can we upgrade this as well? Yeah, we can increase the stress recovery. Unfortunately, we cannot do this, though. Claiming communion with the divine. That might work out. Yeah. And then... God. 
<laughs> it's the delay between words sometimes. Uh, then looks like maybe Tornabut may benefit from the transept as well. So I think this will be the way we go about this. Let's commit to both of these. Alright, so, got some stress relief going on. We got a pretty cool party set moving forward here. We've got Savigny back, of course. She was able to recover from her stressful encounters. I think we are good to go now. Running a little bit lower on gold, so of course we're looking to try to get a big gold bonus from the uh, mission that we take this time around. And uh, I've realized as well, something I'm going to go ahead and get into more detail actually once we select our mission here, that, that thought. I'll, I'll continue that thought, don't worry, I'll, I'll keep that going. So these all provide pretty much the same benefits, at least the short ones do. The Warrens could be interesting, we could go into a new area this time around, but I feel like I might want to still make some more progress in getting to the boss of the ruins, so maybe we should stick with the options that we have here. All we have to do is explore 90% of rooms to succeed in the mission for the uh, for the scout here. And it looks like it shouldn't be too difficult. We got a couple of busts and some crests as a reward for that as well. Let's go ahead and take this one on. I'm going to try to do something a little bit simpler this time around just because I'm kind of terrified of what happened last time. So, we'll take Feroy again. We'll have him man the front lines and then we can take a... Uh, I guess we could take Malvolet with us. I don't really like the Highwayman, honestly, so I'm just going to leave him behind. Obviously, we want to take the Grave Robber, and then we'll round out our party with Savigny to uh, make this our full frontal onslaught. And just to make sure, I'm going to see what the preferred positions are of all these characters, just to make sure I'm not making any really silly decisions here. She's going to move around the party a lot, I imagine, so that's going to be interesting to watch. All right, we've got another short mission here, so we probably just want to roll with eight food again. That's a pretty standard fare. I'm going to get just five torches this time. I'm going to go a little bit more reserved in my purchases. And then we'll bring one skeleton key, one shovel, and a bandage. And that'll probably be good. I don't really necessarily need the holy water. I think we're okay as is. So, let's embark. Once holy idols and shrines have been corrupted to favor pagan gods... Holy water can restore them to their rightful condition. I see. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. For opportunities to use the holy water. Makes sense. Pace out the halls of your lineage once familiar. Now, foreign. Okay. So exploring 90% of rooms, which means we don't necessarily have to hit this one, but we probably will have to go on a circle around this area, coming back through this way, and then maybe doubling back or coming through the starting area. We'll see what happens. Obviously, we're going to hope for some scouting as well as we go through this, but what I was going to say earlier is the fact that I really need to be paying a lot more attention to the stress levels of my characters. That's been what's killing me uh, most of the time. So I'm going to make an honest effort this time to focus all of our attacks on the enemies that deal stressful damage. So that's, I promise this time around, I'm going to make that a priority. That was a fairly uneventful hallway. Okay, we're down to a dim light already, though, so I obviously want to try to get that back up to a radiant just on the off chance that we can manage to scout out once we get through this portion. And nothing over here either. All right, that's kind of interesting. So we'll go ahead and just keep moving. Literally nothing has happened thus far in this dungeon. I'm totally surprised by that. Okay, here we go. So... I don't believe any of these guys are actually capable of dealing stress damage, so this is a good start as far as my new Credo is concerned. But now we get to the chance to use Neuer as our grave robber, and we can see what she's capable of. So immediately she has available the Flashing Daggers, which seems like a pretty good option, although... If I'm reading this correctly, I, I feel like I'm misinterpreting this. That applies a damage modifier to me, but it should only be for that attack. So that's, I think I, again, I misinterpreted it as I was looking at the Shadow Fade back when we were picking up this character. I think that's probably just a one-time thing as opposed to a debuff. Because the debuff, or the buff, is applied when it, uh, when it uh, says self down there on the bottom. So that self buff, I believe, sticks around with you through the majority of the fight. But we'll see what happens, I suppose. So this modifies my damage temporarily down to that 3 to 5 range, whereas normally, with the damage modifier I fire with things such as the Lunge, it would boost us up from 6 to 10 range. And she's got a pretty good chance to hit as well, so I might honestly do a Lunge to try to start this out. But then again, I kind of like the position we're in right now, so let's try out the... Let's try out the Flashing Dragons. Or the flash, Flashing Daggers, rather. God, Flashing Dragons would be badass. Not a bad start. Slice and dice, alright. Pretty much return damage on that end. Uh, judgment's not really necessary right now. We can just go ahead and try to keep these guys up at optimal health levels. Probably in my best interest. Blanket fire, well, alright. Nice dodge, good start. Okay, I'm happy with this. I'm not seeing the targets reflected by the enemies for some reason. Nice bleed resist there as well. 
I'm not sure what happened there. Normally you would be able to see what what they were targeting down here, but that's not working out this time around for some reason. Pretty damn good chance to hit here again. I'm totally okay with applying a lot of uh, AoE damage to start off this battle. Nice. Not bad at all. And then perhaps we get another one with the Zealous Accusation. We could potentially kill here if I get a really lucky hit on the Brigham Cutthroat. Nah, not so much. But again, putting ourselves in a good spot to potentially uh, get some kills with either Flashing Daggers or Breakthrough this time around. So let's see it. Good stuff. As the fiend falls, a faint hope blossoms. Good dodges early on here as well. That blanket fire normally does some serious damage, but this time around we've managed to avoid it, so that's nice. Looks like Savigny might have to take an opportunity to heal herself. Oh, that was an unfortunate dodge. I probably should have been checking hit chance on that. That was my mistake, but we've got a pretty solid chance to hit here as well, and that can give her some health recovery. I believe they both fired, and if not, I think it's this one that's already or that hasn't had a chance to act, so I'm not going to be able to kill him anyway, so I might as well go for the kill on one that actually matters. Confidence surges as the enemy crumbles. Healing its stress relief, so we're in really good shape here. Again, yeah, I was correct about that. But the Blanket Fire luckily did not do that much this time around. We should be able to kill on this shot as well. Ah, uh, well then again, it's not a very high chance to hit, so maybe we should get, just go for the... Ah, it's about the same. Maybe this stunning blow. You know what? That might do pretty well here. In fact, that's a chance to kill, and it's a stun in case it doesn't. And that's a much higher chance to hit, so let's go for it. Alright. Well, that's, you know, about as good as we could expect. Now, uh, another Judgment could be nice. We could go ahead and deal some damage to our Fusilier back here, and he's going to be the one that does some damage this round if I'm not... Oh my god! Okay! A powerful blow. Well, that was completely unexpected and caught me off guard, and I'm alright with that. Booyah! This advantage. Give them no quarter. 775 gold to start off the dungeon. I will take it. And now, with Neuer's uh, acting last, we can just move her back to the normal area in the ranks, and I am, uh, I am very pleased with that first result. Ooh, nice! The pack has a map inside. Well, that's certainly going to make things easier. Hell yes! Okay. We're in businessmen now. We are in businessmen, is what I just said. Uh, yeah, things are looking really solid now, of course. We want to keep the light up, if at all possible, but now we don't have to worry about the potential of scouting for the future. Oh, and we've surprised them. Okay, so now is my chance to finally act on that, uh, that, uh, modus operandi I had established earlier in this episode. We are going to take down these Cordier before they even have a chance to do anything to us, so... Unfortunately, it doesn't look like Faroy has any opportunities to deal damage to them, but he can smite against unholy targets and has a pretty damn ch good chance to take them down, so let's go for the front line. Nice! Alright, I really like my odds of being able to basically uh, destroy this entire team before they have a chance to act. Is the breakthrough good here? I don't really think so. I think the Wicked Hack is still my best bet. Very high chance to hit and a pretty high chance to kill. Nice stuff! With impunity. Oh yeah, baby! Flashing daggers. Now, only gonna hit the back line, so maybe I ought to go with a lunge or something like that. Throne Dagger could be good as well, it's a pretty high chance to hit, but then again the Lunge might do me well and take this guy out in the process. Uh, yeah, that's that's the best option here. I'm probably gonna have to deal with one Tempting Goblet. Oh, wow! You've bled on my best coat! <laughs> Dude, no here's the badass coming through with for us thus far. Now, unfortunately, we're not gonna be getting a kill with the Judgment Call, but we might get some healing that she still needs. My god, RNG is going my way thus far here. Nice! With the dodge of the knife in the dark as well, and the killing blow with the smite. Holy cow! These nightmarish creatures can be felled. They can be beaten. This is going exceptionally well compared to my last run, so let's keep this up, I guess. I don't think I want to use a torch just yet. Our stress is at zero for everybody, which is absolutely immaculate. Uh, let's keep moving. Down to this room. We're gonna come across some loot along the way here as well. It doesn't look like there's any battles to be dealt with. We can totally avoid this one, too. Ooh, here we go. We have a confession booth. Now, do we have some negative quirks? We definitely do. He's faithless, so I don't know if going into the confession booth would really bode well for him. Nocturnal and a known cheat. We'll try it out on Malvolet to see if we can get rid of that nocturnal stat. Forsaken confession booth that hasn't been used in years. Let's try it out. Nocturnal Purge. Wow. Okay, that was exactly what I wanted. Very good. Is the game just taking pity on me this time around? I'm totally okay with that. Let's go ahead and pop another torch real fast. Now, an urn holds the ashes of the departed. Now, I believe we could use holy water on this one if we had taken it this time around, but... Ooh, sentimental gifts are hidden inside. 
Finding the stuff is only the first test. Now it must be carried home. Alright, man. Darkest Dungeon is taking some serious pity on me right now. <laughs> it feels my pain and has decided to allow me to experience some joy for once. This is... This is amazing. Uh, let's go ahead and head down here, I believe. I'm gonna try to avoid this room or this hallway, I think. I know I have to fight this one, but... I don't have to do that second one, so... Oh my god, stashed heirlooms, four crests, and an onyx! Jeez! I will take it! Okay, let's see what we get here. Uh, I don't think they surprised me, that's good. Okay, now... Judgment's still probably my best bet. I am probably gonna want to target the fuselages again. These guys don't deal a lot of stress damage, but we of course still want to take out the guys with the blanket fire capabilities. So the one in the back has already acted, I gotta keep that in mind. The one in the front has acted now. Slice and dice, decent damage, but we can do some group heals and try to take that. Or, uh, account for that a little bit more. Now, Thrown Dagger might be good here. This guy hasn't acted, but I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna get the chance to kill. But if I can manage to do this and then... Well, I'll tell you what, Flashing Daggers might be good too. That's a higher chance to hit as well. And, uh, then I might be able to do a breakthrough and finish him off if I get high damage on the Fusilier. Oh, no good. That was a really high chance to hit too. That's unfortunate. That's probably a knockback. Okay. That's not the worst thing in the world. I believe she still has some options. Yeah, Breakthrough is still available. Okay, so I think we'll try this now. Unless we want to do an Adrenaline Rush? Which could be good, and then we might actually do a Shadow Dash to get her back in the range uh, to hit in the next round. So let's try this out. Self buff will be good, and then we'll do some healing in the next round as well. Uh, not getting as lucky with the dodges this time, but of course we have a lot of potential to uh, take care of that in a little while here. Now, a stunning blow could be nice. I don't believe this guy... Actually, no, he just did the uppercut slash, didn't he? So maybe we should go with a Zealous Accusation to try to deal some good damage. Okay. Now, looking for group heals, looking for a Shadow Dash, and looking for... some good damage from the Hellion next turn with the Adrenaline Boost. Let's go for a Divine Comfort. Alright, not terrible. Oh, boy. Yeah, you know what? This is starting to look a lot worse than the first time I encountered this group. Give me a dodge. Thank you. Alright. That's what I'm looking for. Now... Uh, unfortunately, the Grave Robber uh, acted after the he Hellion this time around. But honestly, it might be okay for us to stick in this position, and we got a pretty good hit chance as well here. Let's just go with this. Alright, not bad. We're looking pretty good here. Zealous Accusation actually might kill here. Let's try it out. Nice! Good stuff, okay. Stress Relief there as well. Now, I don't have to Shadow Fade right now. We could, but that would put us in a bad position for the rest of the fight. Although, that would kill the Cutthroat as well. That's a pretty damn likely scenario. That gives her the dodge chance, which means she wouldn't be taking too much damage. She's already kind of hurting health-wise, so maybe this is a good option. We'll try it out. That is pretty badass. I guess that gives her 20 dodge, and that, of course, is not a permanent debuff, as I, re uh, as I uh, mentioned before. So we've proven that to ourselves now, actually. That's not a per permanent debuff. That's the single-turn debuff taking effect as a result of the attack. Okay, yeah, now I'm starting to see that. I'm sorry, I don't know if that was totally obvious to everybody else, but I think I was mis misinterpreting that. Although I was only misinterpreting it at some times, oddly enough. I was reading it correctly a lot of times, and then other times I, just, I don't know why I thought that was going to be a permanent thing. But nonetheless, still looking like we're in pretty good shape here. I'm going to go for some more group healing, which really isn't doing too well. Maybe I should try to focus a little bit more on individual stuff. Now, Rushed Shot, I believe that takes effect when they're in the front line. Oh, my God. Reeling. About to break. Well, that was unfortunate, but the flashing daggers are still an option. Actually, thrown dagger might be better here. In a single strike. No! Hush your bucket, man. We're fine. Good thrown dagger. Grave robber is pretty badass. Now, a wicked hack would more than likely kill here. Let's go for that. No problem. Now that he's in the front line, we might honestly want to take a few opportunities to heal up because he probably is just going to keep going with a rushed shot. Which, it sounds to me like that's a pretty low chance to hit, considering that's the kind of thing where he's, he's kind of in a panic state and he's looking for any opportunity he can to deal damage. So I, I think I'm going to cheese this a little bit and try to get our party back up to a decent uh, state health-wise. But of course, we are still going to have to try to do things beyond that. And we don't want to stress out our characters by just passing their turn. So we're just going to try to stall as long as we can, get both of our healers opportunities to do some more uh, good for us. Still only getting one health point every time we do that, but actually, you know what? Yeah, I'm starting to think I ought to, I ought to just go with the individual heals to try to get us back up to a better territory. 
Okay, that rush shot can deal some damage, but honestly, it's not anything to really worry about. Uh, I could Shadow Fade again, and that gives her another dodge buff. Let's try that. It's okay. Oh, nice. We got the stun as well, so that's guaranteed more opportunities to heal up. We only get one hit point that time. Okay, so I'm definitely going to go for the individual heals next time with our uh, with our Vestal. Gonna try to move again this way, and then we're just going to continue with the adrenaline rush, or the adrenaline rush boost. Uh, probably need to give the heals over to the Grave Robber. There we go. And then Feroy can heal himself. Another adrenaline rush. Again, we're just using this to stall out for time while we heal up our other party members. There's some three. Okay, that's good. Uh, you know what? I think one more turn. One more turn of stalling out, and then we'll probably go for the kill. Get the Hellion a little bit more health. We're looking okay otherwise. I think we'll be alright. Shadow Fade for the stun chance. Good stuff. Alright, that keeps him from doing anything else to us. Another adrenaline rush stall boost. And another battle heal is coming up. There's the stun proc, battle heal for Feroy. Only one more hit point. Okay, I'm thinking one more Divine Grace on Feroy, and then we'll probably go for the kill otherwise. Not bad. And, uh... Ooh, rush shot again. Dodged it. Good. Okay. We're in good shape. Go for the Wicked Hack. I ended up... Nice. Relieve some stress. A trifling victory. But a victory nonetheless. And I'm totally okay with that. Alright, moving on. Keep on exploring. I'm going to try to keep this Radiant Light going, actually, because I really like to have that. Well, I did take a lot less torches, admittedly, this time around, so maybe I should be concerned about it. No room battle this time. I'm going to move to here, and then we're just going to double back and try to explore the rest of the dungeon. Oh, trap! Oh, I totally walked over it again. Ugh. That was silly. Uh, locked display cabinet. Skeleton key. Treasures are stashed. Very good. Okay, getting a lot of money out of this one. Very, very nice. Now, we just got to get to this room over here. I'm going to go ahead and pop one more. Actually, uh, do I dare? Yeah, I think I ought to. I'm going to keep myself in, de in a decent position moving through the rest of this. All right. Nothing doing there. I don't want to go back this way. And uh, yeah, we're just going to keep on trucking forward. So we've already explored a good portion of the dungeon. As you can see, we only got three rooms left, it looks like. And I... Feel we're in a good enough position to make this work out okay, so here's hoping. And I also would like to not have to encounter another battle. Oh, there's the excursion eating. Okay, so that heals us up a little bit. That's good. And we all obviously want to use the food for that particular purpose anyway, so no harm done there. Uh, I am I'm happy, okay. Didn't run into another trap or battle. That's nice. Moving to this room now. Making progress! And we have a shovel for this, perfect. Even the cold stone seems bent on preventing passage. Stashed heirloom, some more gold, and a couple more busts. Not bad. Now we are down to our last torch. We're going to go ahead and pop that because, of course, the more light, the better. We're hoping, hoping and praying that we're going to come across another one in one of these rooms here. Now, this time around, i got to make sure I don't just walk over this trap like an idiot. Okay, come up on this real slow. Did you disarm it? Very good. Okay, no problem. Lock display cabinet. Have not another skeleton key on me, but we still could try to... Oh, it's trapped. Should know better. She did resist it, though, so that's nice. Okay, now we might actually complete the quest going into this room. We'll see. We did! All right! Well, we can scout ahead as well. There's treasure here. Do I dare? It's shadowy. You know what? This is a bad call to move forward with the shadowy condition. If I had a couple more torches, I would highly consider it. But right now, I think we just gotta call it. We gotta call it good. The great ruins belong to us, and we will find whatever secrets they hold. That was pretty damn good. That was honestly one of the best expeditions we've had thus far. Not even too much stress for Roy. Got a little bit. We'll probably have to commit him to something. Let's see what we get quirk-wise. Robust, very good. Plus fifteen percent these these resist. She's not allowed to visit the brothel. Well, that's unfortunate, but she is also a ruined scrounger as well. Wield scrounger here, too. Very good. Okay. That went extraordinarily well. I am pleased. Our family name, once so well regarded, is now barely whispered aloud by decent folk. Chartres lost 500 gold after becoming tipsy and buying around for the house. Watteau engaged in flagellation, recovered 81 stress, and is no longer selfish very good. She's left in search of a holy vision. Oh, she's gone! 
Oh, well, okay. Tournament is no more. That's interesting. But we have also unlocked the Survivalist and the Nomad Wagon. Got a couple of level ups here, too. Very nice. Now, let's go check out the Survivalist and Nomad Wagon, shall we? At home in wild places, she is a stalwart survivor and a strict instructor. So I believe, uh... Hmm... The Survivalist, I believe this is what allows us to unlock some quirks or something like that? Perhaps... Oh, you know what? I believe these are campfire... Yeah, these are campfire skills. Okay. Interesting. So I'll have to look more into this in the next episode, I believe. I'm sorry, we're kind of cutting things close time-wise right now. But the Survivalist is going to be very useful for unlocking campfire stuff. And then we can check out, check out the Nomad Wagon. Trinkets and charms gathered from all the forgotten corners of the Earth. Ooh, the sun ring. Look at that. That is pretty good, especially considering I'm usually pretty uh, judicious with my pur purchase of torches, so we might want to consider this. Although that is a lot of money. 10,000 gold is quite a bit of cash. Nonetheless, there we go. We've got a lot to look forward to next time here in Darkest Dungeon. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.